with you, Samuel. Really? Yes, really. Mrs. Happy Hound told me you tried to grope her in church last week. Rubbish. Absolute pack of lies. I don't know why you listen to that lying creature. So you never tried to grope her bottom in church last week? No, I did not. It was the week before. What did you say? The door, Elizabeth. What about the new servant? She's as much use as Dr. Gripham's medical qualifications. Oh, please do come in, Sir Jeremy. My husband is still at his breakfast. Morning, peeps. Any danger of you dragging yourself to your office today? As soon as I finish my breakfast. Up all night writing that stupid diary, I bet. Wrong again, Sir Jeremy. Well, no matter. I was hoping to shout to you from the front door. Don't like putting myself in harm's way. There is nothing structurally unsound about this house. And what are you staring at? Your bulbous backside. It seems to inflate itself more every day. I wouldn't be surprised if it soon goes off bang. It's always going off bang, especially after pie and peas in the swan. Have you let the contract for the new 60-gun second rate, huh? Not yet. Why? There's a chap called Sid the Ship who wants to have a word with you about it. Tell him to pop round to my office this afternoon. You might wish to join us. Can't. You seem to forget I'm a member of Parliament. After being in the House for the debate about raising an army to prevent General Monk taking London. See you tonight. Where's Sir Jeremy going? To the House. Everybody knows he's being paid by Monk to submit an endless stream of ridiculous bills. Why? So Parliament hasn't got any time left to debate raising an army against General Monk. Order, order! Members are very thin on the ground this morning, and most of them are completely pissed out of their skulls. Order! How does a bunch of rabble like you expect to repel General Monk? We don't. Who said that? Never mind. Time is of the essence. We must debate raising an army to confront General Monk. Latest word is he has already left Scotland. <laughs> Stop behaving like a lot of spineless buffoons. We are spineless buffoons. Mr. Speaker, I would like to place a bill before the House. Not another one. Does the Honourable Member for Dunstable South West realise this is his 14th bill this week? Thank you, Mr. Squeaker. How dare you, Deputy Squeaker indeed. Mr. Squeaker. Further to my last bill being defeated, I wish to place a new bill before the house. Which is? The use of ugly horses to pull coaches is increasing and must be banned. Old people and children are being terrified by such hideous creatures. I demand we take a vote on this foul and outrageous practice immediately. <laughs> Is this where the new Hackney Company trades from? Top of the morning to you, sir. This is Ryan Coach, the No Affairs Coach line, so it is, sir. It will be five pounds surcharge to put your gargantuan buttocks on these brand new seats, sir. My what? Your fat arse. Where can I be taking you to today, sir? I need to get to an important piss-up in the King's Head in Old Fish Street. The nearest Ryan Coach stop for the King's Head in Old Fish Street is Liverpool. Fish Street is a ten-minute walk. Liverpool is hundreds of miles from London. Liverpool's the closest Ryan Coach, the low fares coach line, stop for Fish Street. Do you have any luggage, sir? No. That'll be an extra five groats. What on earth for? For having no luggage, good sir. That's ridiculous. So if I had luggage, it would be cheaper. Oh no, that would be an extra 20 groats. Those are Ryan Coach terms and conditions, so they are kind, sir. Your company won't last long with this kind of service. Ryan Coach, the low fares coach line, will be a success. 
even if it takes 320 years or more. If Ryan Coach had coaches that fly, it still wouldn't succeed. Oh, very droll, sir. I'll walk to the swan. Is there anything else I can help you with today, sir?